In my over 25 years of using Microsoft Excel, there are three functions that I always come back to as the ones that can get me over any hurdle I may be facing. And there's also one new one I want to cover, which is kind of an update to one of these old ones that has been around forever. Let's dive in. So to start, I'm heading over to ftdacademy.com slash resources. I'm going to download the Superstore data set under Excel tips and tricks. I click on the icon there and then I click download and I get this beautiful data set. I open this up in Excel. I need to enable editing. And what I have here are three different tabs, orders, people, and returns. On the orders tab, you can see that we have essentially orders for products. You can see we have some good measures there like sales, quantity, and then we have people, which are where the people are, the sales people for the different regions and what region they're associated with. And then we have another tab here, which shows me if an order was returned. So I want to calculate a few different things and use these three functions. Okay, the first one I wanna know is if an order was returned. So I'm going to jump over to the end of this data set, give myself some room to work, and I'm going to put a new column here called returned. And in here, I need to do a VLOOKUP. Now a VLOOKUP is a way to bring in another value that is associated with the same row or lookup value that we're looking at right now. So for this, I'm gonna type VLOOKUP, I'll hit tab, I need to give it the lookup value. In this case, I wanna look up the order ID. So if I scroll over, I can see on column B, we have the order ID. I'll hit comma, and now I need to give it the table or array that has these order IDs. I'll head over to the returns tab, and I'm just gonna click on this entire column. I'm also going to hit function F4 to lock this column. So if this were to move around, it's always looking at the column B of the returns tab. Now I'll hit comma and I need to return something. A, typically there would be another value here. We'll try this again in a second. But in this case, I just want to hit one. I just want to return basically the value, the order ID, whether or not it was returned. And then for exact match, I'll say zero and close parentheses. And there you go. I have an error. So this happens a lot. And VLOOKUP is one of the most powerful formulas. I'm going to go ahead and copy this down. And I can verify that, yes, it does in fact work, but of course not every order has been returned, thankfully for our business here. And you can see as I scroll down that we have other orders being returned. So that tells me that I need to do something. I need to handle this error. So the next function after VLOOKUP is called isError. So here I'm going to say is error, And then I'll open that and then just put a close parent around the VLOOKUP function. Now it's going to say true or false. So if I copy this down again, you can see that there were those ones down here where they were returned, where the, it is not an error, so it is false. It is not an error. So we're getting there, returns true or false. It's actually the opposite of what we want here. But now what we can do is we can get more creative with this. And this is using the if function. So now we're gonna say if is error on this whole big thing here, this VLOOKUP, comma, and I can just say zero or one. So let's say zero for it wasn't returned and one for it was returned. I'll close that. I have my zero. I'll copy it down and you can see all the ones that were returned. And in fact, I can now sum this in which case it's telling me how many of these were returned. In fact, these are line item details on an order. So it's not a distinct count, but you get the point. And so what I'm doing is handling that error gracefully, we would say in the programming world, and I'm doing something where it's returning a value that's more interesting than just the order ID or some other value. It's returning a number, which then I can do things with. I can sum, I can average, I can do other metrics and other analysis on. Okay, so those are the three main functions that I wanted to show you. If, is, error, and VLOOKUP. Those can get you so far when you're working with data, especially when you're combining data sets and trying to match them all up. Now, another version of this is the new function called XLOOKUP. It's an update to VLOOKUP and it allows you to pull things back in different orders than VLOOKUP does. So in order to demonstrate this, what I wanna do is I wanna pull back the person associated with this order. And if you recall under our people tab, we have the person and then the region. Now see the problem with this, and let me zoom in a little bit on it. The problem with this is that the person is on the left side of the region. And in our orders tab, the region is all we have. So we want to look up the region and then pull back a column to the left of our lookup value. And with VLOOKUP, that's not possible. So 
what we need to do instead is use XLOOKUP. Now, XLOOKUP is far more powerful than just this one example, but this is a case where VLOOKUP, typically in the olden days, what we would have to do is copy this person column over to the right side of our lookup value. It's a very common thing to do. Sometimes we'll duplicate it. Sometimes we just move it around, whatever. So here, what I want to do is I want to add a column for person and I'm going to type equals X lookup. I'll hit tab. I want to find the lookup value. So the lookup value here is the region, which is in column M. I'm going to hit comma. It asks for the lookup array. The lookup array here is going to be this column here. And I can select the entire column or just these specific rows. I'm going to hold function in F4 to lock it in place. You can see those dollar signs there. Then I need the return array. So it's going to look for the value in M2 in this array here, this column B1 through 5. And it's going to return wherever I tell it to. So I'm going to select A1 through 5. And I'm going to lock that as well. And then I'm just going to close the function there. There are a couple other options there, but we're not going to use those for now. I'm just going to close that. And you can see now I have the person associated with that sale. I'll copy that down and we are doing pretty good. So with those three make it four functions, you're going to be unstoppable. I know you are. So let me know what you're going to use this for, how this has helped you and all that in the comments. I'm really interested and I love hearing from you guys. Also, if you want to really become unstoppable, like Thanos level unstoppable, make sure to check out the video I did here where you can automate pulling in data from websites cleaning it up and all that so you don't have to go copy it over and over every single time. That's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you back here next time.